by transcription. Henry! Henry Aldrich! Coming, Mother! Yes, The Aldrich Family, written by Clifford Goldsmith. Centerville is only a dot on the map, and 117 Elm Street is only a typical American home. But it's where the Aldridges live, and it isn't far from where you live, or used to live. And as a typical teenage boy, Henry Aldridge is always certain to stir up any number of mishaps and memories. The scene opens in the Aldridge living room. The time is Saturday morning. Oh, boy, Mary, do I feel swell. Henry, why are you puffing out your chest that way? I don't know. It just feels swell. Why do you say that, dear? Do you know what happened at school this week, Mother? What, dear? Well, they were having a meeting, see? And I didn't know they were going to elect a class debt committee. And the first thing I know, somebody nominated me. What kind of a committee? A class debt committee. A class debt? Sure, Mother. We owe money. And they needed someone to take charge of it. And you were elected? Sure. Almost unanimously. Who did what unanimously? The class father. To me. Sam, Henry's been elected to wipe out his class debt this year. (laughs) Well, gee whiz, I don't know. Everything's just suddenly going swell. And you were elected unanimously? Well, practically. And then the school photographer took our picture. Of you, Henry? Sure. Henry, I certainly hope you didn't have your picture taken looking like that. What's the matter with me? You never needed a haircut more in your life. My haircut? I don't need a haircut. Look at it. It's almost down to your shoulders. Mother, you're exaggerating. Would you like some ribbons in it, Henry? Mary. Well, dear, you should never have let them take a picture of you like that, especially if they elected you unanimously. Mother, they didn't just point the camera at my hair. George Bigelow didn't even have a tie on. What was he doing in the picture? Well, she was, Father. You don't think they asked me to wipe out the whole debt single-handed, do you? Well, those that don't notice George's tie will certainly notice your hair. Henry, how many are there on your committee? Well, counting everybody, 14. 14? 14. Yeah. But in the picture, I was in the first row, Father. Well, it's too late now, but you're going down and get a haircut. On a Saturday morning? Waste the whole Saturday morning in a barber's chair? As a matter of fact, if you wait until I finish the breakfast dishes, I'll go down with you. Now, Mother, I can tell him how to cut my own hair all by myself. But, Henry, how about the last time you came home with a haircut? Gee whiz, Mary, that's the way all the guys were wearing it last month. Low in the front and high in the back. (laughs) Well, I'm going with you. Mother, please don't embarrass me. My goodness, what's embarrassing about having your mother go into a barber shop with you? It just isn't done, Mother. The very idea makes me nervous. Alice! Yes, Sam? Could you come here a minute, please? I'll be right there. And, Henry, you're to get ready to go down to the barber shop. Yes, Mother. Only don't feel you have to leave your work in order to go with me. Mother? Mother? Henry, she wants to go with you. Mary, she'll only be embarrassed down there with all those men. You tell her I'll have it cut exactly right. You better wait, Henry. Henry! Henry! Mother, he's gone. He's gone where? To the barber's. And when he comes back, he'll simply be a sight. Well, I have a good notion to phone Thompson's Barbershop and tell them just what I want done. Where are you going, Henry? (laughs) To the Barbershop, Homer. Now, I'm in a hurry. Look out. You don't need a haircut. What do you want a haircut for? Listen, Homer, do you see that lady coming down the street back there? In the next block? The one that's running? Yeah. That isn't my mother, is it? No, she's running for a bus. Oh. What barber are you going to? Mr. Thompson. Right here in the Centerville Times building. Oh. Did you know you're going to have your picture in the Times tomorrow? In the Times? Sure. The one guy McCorkle took of the class debt committee. Is it going to be in the Times? Sure, tomorrow. He spent all day yesterday persuading them to run it, and they finally gave in. Well, gee whiz. Imagine. Homer, Homer, you see that car coming? That isn't my mother, is it? No. Just the same, I'd better go into the barber shop. If I see your mother, I'll tell her you're looking for... No, Homer! (laughs) (laughs) You never even saw me. 
Hi there, Henry. Now, how do you do, Mr. Lassen? Well, hello, Henry. Hello, Mr. Thompson. Uh, do you like this chair here? Well, you have one not quite so near the window. You don't like this one? Well, well, I'm thinking of the strong light. This is the only one that isn't busy. Hop in. Yes, sir. Hair trim? Yes, sir. How do you want it? Well, I'll tell you. I want it sort of... You see this right over my ears? Yeah. Well, it's sort of hard to explain. You see this right up on top? Yeah. Well, well, I'll try to tell you. Do you know Eddie Shenton? Eddie Shenton? Well, he was a lifeguard down the lake this summer. How did he have his cut? Well, it's hard to show you if you've never seen him. Well, uh, how about this chart here? I got a photograph of just about every style there is. Well, gee whiz, let's take a look at it. Yeah, here you are. Now, here's a style they call the New Yorker. That would sort of fit your head. You think so? Is that popular? Oh, sell a lot of these. And here's the one they call the Yale Bowl. No, I don't think my mother... In fact, I don't think anybody would care for that one. What's this one? The Bull Brummel. That's more the Eddie Shenton kind. Could you give me the Bull Brummel up on top and the New Yorker on the sides? <laughs> sure. No, I think that'd be a good combination. Well, I'm glad to have a customer that knows what he wants. Well, the way I look at it, if you don't know how you want your own hair cut, who does? Would you mind swinging the chair around a little so I could look out the window, please? I thought the light hurt your eyes. Uh, I, I like to watch the traffic. Uh, uh, well, how's that? Fine. Would you mind not twisting your head like that? Oh, excuse me. I just happened to see somebody come out of that store across the street. Say, who is that? That girl? Oh, that's Natalie White. Not bad. She's got a dog just like mine. Would you mind holding your head still? Well, I wasn't looking at her. I was looking at that man go up the ladder. Uh, the Times is putting up a new electric sign out there. The Times? Mr. Thompson, that reminds me. Do you ever read the Times on Sunday? Yes, sir. Well, I certainly wish you'd skip it tomorrow. Yeah, bad news? They're going to print my picture, darn it. Gee, do I hope they don't put it on the front page. What are they going to print it for? Well, I'm in charge of something over at the high school. Gee, was I embarrassed when I heard about it. Embarrassed? You know, everybody in town will see it, and they'll all be calling up my mother. Well, most boys would be pretty proud about a thing like that. Well, I'd rather just be one of the crowd. You know, once they start printing your picture, where's it all going to end? Could you hold your head still, Henry? Well, just looking over at the bakery. That Natalie White's coming across the street, isn't she? I guess she is. Hmm, Good-looking girl. Oh, gee whiz, what's she coming in here for? Excuse me, but could I bother you? Yes, ma'am. Hello, Henry. Hello. How's your dog? She's fine. How's yours? He's fine. <laughs> Mr. Thompson, they don't have any change over at the bakery, and they thought perhaps you could change this $5 bill. Sure, I guess I can help you. Hey, Mr. Thompson, is Henry here? Homer, where did you come from? Hi, Natalie. Hi, Homer. Henry, I just ran into your sister up the street. She's told me to tell you as soon as you've had your hair cut, you're to go right home and let your mother see it. <laughs> your mother? What do you mean she has to see it? Homer, did Mary say that? Sure. She said Henry couldn't be trusted in a barber chair. <laughs> Honestly? She was Homer, always trying to kid. Mr. Thompson, when you get through on top, I'd like a shave. <laughs> a what? A what? A shave. And make it close. And with bay rum. <laughs> Is there anything I can do to help you? Well, I'm busy right this minute, dear, breaking these eggs. Oh, well, if there's anything I can do... Henry! I thought I told you to go to the barber's. I did go. Well, why didn't you have your hair cut? She whiz, I did. But can't you see? Henry, he didn't even touch it. Turn around. Mother, I know he cut it. I saw the hair fall off. <laughs> well, dear, I can tell when my own son's hair has been cut. All he did was comb it down. Mother, is there anything I can... Henry Aldrich, what's happened to you? What do you mean, what's happened to me? Well, you're as white as a sheet. Gee whiz, Mary, that's just sort of... powder. Talcum powder? Sure. Didn't you ever hear of anybody using talcum powder after shaving? Henry, who shaved you? And what's that piece of bandage doing on your cheek? It's just a cut, Mary. It's just a cut. From the razor. How did the barber happen to cut you? A ladder fell. <laughs> What fell, Henry? A ladder that belonged to the Centerville Times. And when the man jumped, I jumped. And so did Mr. Thompson. And, Mother, look at Henry's hair. I have, dear. My goodness, it's even longer than it was before he went. 
How could it be, Mary? But it is, Henry. This morning it was in curls down to here, and now it's straight and it comes all the way down to here. My goodness, what's that awful smell? What smell? Henry, what did he put on your hair? Just a tonic, Mother, to keep me from growing bald. Mother, hold me while I faint. Henry, dear, I'm not going to have you walking around the house looking like that. And, Mother, did you know Henry's been going around telling everyone he's going to have his picture in the paper tomorrow? Listen, Mary, who told you that? My goodness, it's all over town. It is? I was just talking to Ted Gould, and he said Mr. Thompson told him. Well, I certainly thought Mr. Thompson would keep it confidential. Henry, you're going right straight back and tell Mr. Thompson to pay a little more attention to his own business and not so much to everybody else's. What do you mean? I want him to cut your hair correctly. Mother, he did. Henry, I want your hair cut. Mother, you're just influenced by the looks of this bandage. If you back off into the dining room and look at me, you'll get an entirely different perspective. <laughs> I'm not going to pay good money to have you look like that from any perspective. Now, please start, dear. Mother, I'll be embarrassed to death. She was Mr. Thompson's very busy, and he cut my hair, and I paid him. I wouldn't be comfortable asking him to do it again. Well, then I'm sure Mary would be very glad to go down with you and ask him. Mother! Yes, Mother, I'd be delighted to. No, Mary, no! But, Henry, don't you want to be comfortable? Mary, you can't do that to me. Henry, stop acting like a child. I'll go back, Mother, alone. I'll ask him by myself. But please don't any member of this family come along. And will you tell him to take some off the sides and off the top? Yes, Mother. I'll tell him to give me a good all-around trimming. Natalie, where are you going? Huh? Well, I'd carry your bundles for you if I didn't have to go back down to my... I mean, back downtown for something. You've got to go back? What happened to your face? A man fell off a ladder. <laughs> On you? No, right in front of the Centerville Times. He didn't hurt himself, though. Oh, that reminds me. I guess I'll certainly have to buy a copy of the Times tomorrow. You will? What for? Oh, you're just modest. Everybody knows about it. About my... About my... Your picture. It is going to be in the Times tomorrow, isn't it? Oh, yeah, sure. It sort of slipped my mind. I'm getting a copy for my family, and I'm going to send one to my cousin in Abbott City. You are? I'm going to tell you you live right in the same block with me, and you have a dog just like mine. Was your picture taken with your dog? No, with... With... It was taken without him. Henry, would you mind looking in this bag, please? The one under my arm. Sure, what for? Could you see where that bottle of vanilla extract is broken? Well, it's there, but it isn't broken. Isn't that funny? I thought I smelled something. <laughs> you did? Henry! Oh, gee whiz. Henry, wait for me! Oh, boy. Goodbye, Natalie. Henry! I've got to be going. Your I guess it is. Tell her I haven't time to wait. <laughs> We'll return to the Aldrich family in just a minute. Tonight, NBC rolls out the red carpet for two of the most popular people in radio. Tonight, Phil Harris and Alice Faye return to the air on this station with their whole gang and more laughs than you can shake a stick at. And this is just a reminder to tune in. Then, as another Sunday feature, Theater Guild on the Air brings you Morning Star with Sylvia Sidney and Molly Goldberg and a story about some wonderful people who made homes out of a cold water tenement. And also this evening... Jack Webb stars in another dramatization of a case history from the files of the Los Angeles Police Force on Dragnet. And no NBC lineup is complete without the best news and special events shows. So tonight, listen to the American Forum of the Air and meet the press. Yes, for the tops in radio, just stay tuned to NBC. <laughs> And now getting back to the troubles of Henry Aldrich. His mother is upset about his haircut. When he returned home from the barber shop, she told him, to his complete embarrassment, that he must go back and have his hair recut, this time correctly. The scene opens as Henry re enters the barber shop. That you, Henry? Yes, Mr. Thompson. What are you back for? You forget something? No, not exactly. I'll tell you, Mr. Thompson. If you aren't too busy, 
Could you make a couple of small changes on this job? What's wrong with it? Oh, why, nothing's wrong with it. I like it very much, only my mother... I mean, well, you don't suppose you could give me a little less of the New Yorker and a little more of the Yale Bowl, could you? Sure, I can do anything you want, but if I even touch your hair, it's going to spoil it. You think so? I've been cutting hair for 20 years, and that's one of the best jobs I've ever done. Well, now that I look at it in your mirror, I can see that it's pretty good. Your mother see it in a good light? Oh, it hasn't anything to do with my mother. I I guess it was just the mirror we have at home. Of course, I'll spoil it for you if you really want me to. Oh, no, I wouldn't even have you touch it. Goodbye, Mr. Thompson. Goodbye. See you in a couple of weeks. Henry! Oh, gee whiz, Mary. Has Mr. Thompson changed your hair yet? Not yet, Mary. I'm just going in. Well, I'll go in with you. No, Mary, you go on. Please. I'll be in here for quite some time. But Henry! No, Mary! What is it now? Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Thompson... I know it's against my better judgment, especially when... Well, that is... Well, I think I'll let you spoil it. What's that? What I mean is... I think you could take a little more off the top and the sides, maybe. What for? Well, well, I've got a hat at home, see, and it's my favorite hat. And it fits a little snug. And I think maybe it would be better if... Why didn't you tell me you wanted it cut to fit a hat? I didn't think of it before. Well, hop up in the chair. But mind you, I'm not going to ruin it. I'm just going to ease it off a little. Oh, sure. I wouldn't want you to do any more than that. Quite a crowd out in front there, isn't there? Yeah, that new sign that's being hoisted into place is quite a job. I'm glad to have sort of a front row seat like this. Mr. Thompson, is Mr. Lapham here? Yeah, just a second. Hey, John, customer. Coming. Hello, Toby. Hi, Han. Will it be, Toby, a haircut? Yeah, my mother says give it the works. Mm, Get in the chair. Henry, were you just talking to that Natalie White a little while ago? Sure, why? Well, just because she's a new girl in town, Henry, don't think you have to impress her with yourself. What do you mean? You know what you told her. I? About your picture being in the paper tomorrow. I told her that? Toby, I hardly brought the subject up. Hold your head still, Henry. You made the whole thing up just to make her think you were somebody. You're crazy. You mean it isn't going to be in the paper? Yes, it is, Mr. Thompson. It is not. Do you want to bet, Toby? Do you want to bet? Sure, I'll bet you. Oh, still, Toby. I'll bet you anything you want to. How much do you want to bet? Anything you want. All right, how much? Toby, I happen to know the paper is printing it. All right, all right. Here's what I'll bet you then. Ouch. Now, look what you made me do. I've given you a bald spot. Well, you better take it all off. I like it short. Henry, here's what I'll bet you. We'll make it a box of candy. If I win, you pay for it, and I'll give it to Natalie White. If you win, I'll pay for it, and you can give it to Natalie. Say that again, Toby. Hold still, will you? (laughs) If I win, all you have to do is buy me a box of candy to give to Natalie. And if I win, you buy me one to give her? Sure. Shake. 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 Hey, Hey, hold still. You want to lose an ear? It's a bat. It's a bat. Hey, Henry. What do you want, Homer? I thought we were going to listen to the World Series this afternoon. Keep quiet while I finish combing his hair. But the game's begun. The first man struck out. I'll be right there, Homer. Ah, There you are, Henry. Can you hurry, Mr. Lapham? That job's perfect, Henry. Now, don't you even touch a comb to it. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Thompson. Frankly, it's just exactly what I wanted. Hurry up, Henry. I'm coming. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. See you in a couple of weeks. Now, wait for me, fellas. Mr. Lapham, couldn't you just sort of chop it off? She whizzed. Does that Toby think he knows everything? Why? When he comes in and he tries to make out I'm a liar. Because my picture isn't going to be in the paper tomorrow. It isn't. What? It isn't. What do you mean it isn't? You're crazy. Are you trying to make me out a liar, Henry? You're the one that told me he was going to be in. But I just heard that Guy McCorkle that took the picture dropped his camera. When? I don't know when he dropped it. How would I know? Well, gee whiz, Homer, you should never have misled me like that. Am I going to be disgraced? Why care about Toby? Homer, it's all over town that my picture's going to be in. Well, don't blame me, Henry. Gee whiz. You think I want to pay for a box of chocolates for Toby to give to Natalie? Then have him sit and even eat them with her? Again, Mother? Yes, dear. Mother, what does Henry have to do again? Mary, dear, if I were you, I'd stay out of this. Oh, my goodness, Henry, it's worse than ever. Now, listen, Mary, I'm tired of this. All I've heard since I got up this morning is my hair. It's been hair, hair, hair. Henry! What, Homer? The Yanks just scored. Mother, please don't make me go back and be trimmed again. Right in the middle of the World Series. Henry, I don't want to hear another word about it. You're to go back and tell Mr. Thompson that I want your hair cut correctly or I'll know the reason why. I'll go. Only when I get back into that chair, it'll be just like getting up on the guillotine. Henry! Come on, Homer. We've got to go downtown again. Now? Homer, I have to. Mother, do you want me to go with him this time? Listen, Mary, don't you even come near that barber shop. What do you have to go for, Henry? I have to have my hair cut again. How are you going to have it done this time? <laughs> 
Well, I don't give a darn how he cuts it. I've lost interest. Aren't you even interested in how the Yanks come out? No. Do you have that snapshot of me? Sure. Do you understand what you're going to do with it? Sure. I just put it under the door of the Times office and beat it. Is my name on the back? Sure. It says, Henry W. Aldrich, chairman of the class debt committee. I guess that'll put Toby in his place. It's too bad you don't have one where you're not in a bathing suit. Do you think they'll really print it, Homer? To be honest, no. But I'll tell you how you could get it in, though. How? Get engaged. Then they'd be sure to print your picture. <laughs> on the society page. In a bathing suit? What difference would that make? You'd win the box of candy. I know how I might get my picture in. How? Well, if I could only be near a good accident just as it comes off, then maybe I could. Look out! Look out, Henry. Do you want to be killed? He was. Why does he watch where he's going? Boy, I practically saved your life. I'm not sure you should have. Box of candy, eh? Yes, Mr. Aldrich. Uh, Toby was sitting in this chair here, and your son Henry was over there in Mr. Thompson's chair. And they started arguing me having his picture in the paper tomorrow. Is it going to be in? So he says, Mr. Aldrich. And Toby says he's crazy. That's how they came to bet the box of candy. Well. Now then, is there anything else? Are you all through shaving me? Yes, sir. I'll tell you what you can give me, a couple of good hot towels. Yes, sir. Just let me lie under them for a while and relax. Yes, Mr. Aldrich. You heard how the ball game's going? Four to two, seventh inning. Now, just put your head back, Mr. Aldrich. Good. Too hot? No. No, feels good. Mr. Lappin, is Mr. Thompson here? Well, you back. Who wants me? It's Henry, Mr. Thompson. Now what? Uh, Mr. Thompson, could I just have a word with you? You've changed your mind again? Oh, no. No, as far as I'm concerned, my hair's just perfect the way it is. Only if you'd be willing to cut it a little short, I'd be glad to pay you 60 cents out of my allowance. What do you want to do that for? You rolling in money? I don't care about money. The main thing is, I want to see everybody satisfied. Well, hop up there. I'll get my clippers. Between this haircut and that box of candy you bet, you're going to be broke. She was. Why should I worry about money? My allowance is gone. There's always plenty more where it came from. I don't want to get personal, Mr. Thompson, but I wonder if maybe your hot towels aren't too hot. What makes you say that? I thought I heard the man in the next chair groan. Sit still, Henry. Uh, yes, sir. Well, if your mother doesn't like it this time, it won't be my fault. You think you ought to make it that short? Sure. We're closed all day tomorrow, and this is your last chance. <laughs> I know, Mr. Thompson, but... Hold still. Don't even speak. There. Well, I think that's much... Will that be a full 60 cents, Mr. Thompson? Forget it. Forget it? Yeah, and I'll try and do the same. Well, thank you very much. Now I can go home and watch the game without anything on my mind. Goodbye, Mr. Thompson. I'll see you in two weeks. Forget it. Hey, Henry! Henry! Oh, I thought you were Henry Aldrich. (laughs) I am Henry Aldrich. What happened to you? Now, listen, Homer, what is it you want? Turn around and let me see your face. You're looking at my face. (laughs) Did you take care of the picture? I got caught. Where, Homer? Sticking your picture under the Times door. Just as I put it there, the door opened, and they told me to take it and beat it. Well, gee whiz, Homer, you're a big help. Hello, Henry. Oh, I thought you were... Oh, my! Now, listen, Natalie. Have some scrambled eggs, Henry? No, thank you, Father. Mary. Yes, Mother. Will you please tell your brother he just spilled some marmalade? But I'm not speaking to him either, Mother. Why not? Well, look at him, Father. His head is practically shaved. Well, gee whiz, Mary. After you've gone to the barber shop as many times in one day as I did yesterday, you can't expect to have much hair left. Let's not even mention Henry's hair anymore. I'm going to get ready to go to church. I'll be ready to go with you in just a minute, Mother. Oh, no, you're not going with me. Well, gee whiz. You mean I can't appear in public with anyone in the family? Henry, have you been down to the corner to get the times? No, Father. Did you forget it? No, sir. I, I just thought you'd like to eat breakfast in peace. 
without worrying about anything. Well, as soon as you finish your breakfast, will you please go and get the paper? Yes, sir. But first, could I make a proposition with you? What kind of a proposition? Well, well, if I go down and get the paper, not only this morning, but every Sunday morning for the next six months, could you advance me a dollar and a half? To buy a box of candy? A box of candy? Father, what do you mean by that? I thought you were rolling in money. I'm rolling in it? After all, when your allowance runs out, there's always plenty more where it came from, isn't there? Who told you that? Just common gossip. Uh, Mary? Yes, Mother? Will you please tell your brother that Toby Smith is very anxious to speak to him on the phone? Mother, could you please tell him I can't possibly come to the phone? Why not? I'm sick in bed. But you're not. Couldn't you say he's been scalped? Please, Mother, tell him I can't come to the phone. Who's that? Hey, excuse me. Excuse me, but is Henry here? What do you want, Homer? Did you see the paper? Did you see the paper? I'm not even interested in it. Did you see the front page? Here, take a look. At what? At this. What is it? It's just three pictures of they're putting up that new sign in front of the Times office. Don't you see yourself? Me? Where? Sitting in Thompson's barber shop in the chair. I am? Well, how do they happen to print that? Well, why don't you read what it says? These three unusual photographs were snapped in front of the Times building yesterday at 11 a.m., 1 p.m., and 3 p.m. <laughs> Which one am I in? All three. <laughs> All three? Look at yourself under my magnifying glass, Henry. You can even see the scar where Mr. Thompson cut you. Well, gee whiz. I look pretty good, don't I? Mother! Is Toby still on the phone? You would be a poor businessman to invest money without determining what your dividend would be. So I'd like to tell you what return you'll receive on your investment in your community chest. Well, normally about 40% of 100 families receive directly services of some kind from one or more red feather agencies during the year. Such services include aid to the handicapped, to orphan children, to the aged, and to the sick and needy. And all families benefit indirectly because these services work to make your community a healthier, happier, better place in which to live. Well, this year, it's a bigger red feather because the United Red Feather Campaign must raise $17 million extra to provide for the United Defense Fund services, which include 257 USO clubs, USO camp shows, American Relief for Korea, and many others. So when you make your contribution, give enough to cover normal needs, plus an extra amount for the added services made necessary by this defense emergency. It's a bigger red feather this year. Give the United Way. <laughs> Sora Toby. Why, Henry? Didn't he give you the box of candy to give to Natalie? Sure he did. But I didn't know he was going to put my pictures in it. Those three getting your hair cut? Sure. And on the bottom he wrote, Chairman of the Class Debt Committee, going into debt. Family is written by Clifford Goldsmith. Henry is played by Bobby Ellis and Homer by Johnny Fiedler. Mr. and Mrs. Aldridge are House Jameson and Catherine Roth. Your announcer is Dick Dudley. Preceding was transcribed. Tonight it's the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show and Theater Guild.